Tyrannosaurus Rex, the Tyrant Lizard King, ruled the Earth for barely a million years, a blink in the geological eye. Then, in a blinding flash, the Sovereign and his subjects were no more. It's hard to overstate the significance of this day. It's really the day that sets into motion the events that make the modern world as we know it. Today, T-Rex reigns as a pop culture icon. His toothy grin and animal magnetism seduce amateurs and experts alike. My favorite creature in the history of the planet is Tyrannosaurus rex. When I was a little kid, I wanted to grow up to be Tyrannosaurus. When I was told I couldn't do that, I decided I would study them. It's a cliche that people say, oh, it's the coolest dinosaur or whatever. But it really is the coolest. Before his glory days, T-Rex overcame an unfortunate birth name. There were fragments of Tyrannosaurus that had been found in the 1890s that were given the name Manospondylus gigas, which is the gigantic sponge vertebra. Thankfully, that name didn't stick. The first fossil to bear his royal title was unearthed in Hell Creek, Montana in 1905. Discoverer Barnum Brown called the charismatic creature my favorite child. After 65 million years in a pauper's grave, T-Rex was an overnight sensation. The New York Times hailed him as the king of all kings and the absolute warlord of the earth. When it was first found there during those days, it just got so much attention. The, the name Tyrannosaurus Rex II is a product of genius. That's the only dinosaur where people actually know the species name of a dinosaur. Ask them about Triceratops and other sort of kid favorites. They couldn't tell you a species name. But Tyrannosaurus Rex, the king of the tyrant lizards. Museums around the world race to acquire and mount their own T-Rex. His fearsome pose was so upright that nothing could stop him, except the ceiling. His early appearances made a lasting impression. Chicago's 1933 World's Fair promoted radio and a lumbering T-Rex. The New York World's Fair presents the grandest spectacle on earth for 1964 and 1965. New York's 1964 pageant featured color television and the same old T-Rex. Decades of cheesy movies cemented his status as a mindless, robotic villain. By the 1980s, the king was clamoring for a makeover. Beneath his regal bearing, lay the heart of a dandy. When you look at the group of dinosaurs that T-Rex fits into, on one side we have dinosaurs with feathers, on the other side we have birds. It's simplest to think that T-Rex probably had some type of feathers or quills covering its body, which is different than how we think of it, right? And so T-Rex was both terrifying and fancy. <laughs> Biomechanical studies showed his big tail acted as a counterweight, and museums finally brought their skeletons down to earth. The new T-Rex was swifter, smarter, and deadlier than ever. What mighty force could have possibly ended his reign? The mystery of his death became the ultimate cold case. 
50 or 60 years ago, people really had no idea why the dinosaurs disappeared. And there were all these wild ideas. The planet was too hot or too cold. They had parasites. Mammals ate all their eggs. And you know, this is something that you see in science when, when you're on the wrong track, your explanations tend to get really complicated. And then when you figure something out, your explanation becomes very, very simple. One explanation created a stir. Nobel Prize winning physicist Luis Alvarez joined forces with his son, geologist Walter Alvarez. They zeroed in on numerous dig sites, all with signs of two simultaneous events, the end of the Cretaceous era and abnormally high levels of the element iridium. Iridium, extremely rare on Earth, is plentiful on comets and asteroids. According to the Alvarezes, a massive extraplanetary impact had ended the reign of T. rex. Scientists greeted the Alvarez hypothesis with widespread ridicule. Paleontologists didn't want this great riddle of our discipline solved by a couple of outsiders. And so there was a tremendous amount of resistance to this idea. Paleontologists knew one thing for sure. Whatever befell the dinosaurs happened gradually, over millions of years. Sudden extinction smacked of a biblical miracle, an outrageous notion. And as naysayers pointed out, a cataclysmic impact would have left a sizable crater, and none could be found. Luis Alvarez died in 1988, convinced he was right, but unable to prove it. In 1993, the release of Jurassic Park brought dinosaurs roaring back to life. Its intriguing premise, recreating the reptiles from ancient DNA. But no DNA has been known to survive more than 100,000 years, and transforming DNA fragments into an entire creature is like turning the words to be or not to be into the play Hamlet. Modern science and popular legend do converge on a central fact. T-Rex was the baddest of the bad. Tyrannosaurus is the largest of the meat-eating dinosaurs. It had the largest brain of the big meat-eating dinosaurs. It had the most powerful bite we've calculated so far among dinosaurs. It ate the other creatures in its environment, and nothing but it ate it. And indeed, we do find Tyrannosaurus bite marks on Tyrannosaurus. We now have fossilized feces of the T-Rex from Western Canada. It's a large mass, was about a foot and a half in length and it mostly consists of flesh, and the rest of it is bone, and that bone was crunched up. So clearly, T-Rex just went up to prey, took out big chunks, and swallowed them whole, and digested what it could. As T-Rex took his star turn at the multiplex, the investigation into his demise accelerated. Over a hundred sites worldwide contained spikes of iridium, but one was different. The Brazos River in Texas also showed signs of an ancient tsunami. Further analysis detected shocked quartz, rock compressed by an enormously powerful impact. Core samples in nearby Yucatan, Mexico indicated gravity anomalies. The inquest rushed to the tiny village of Chicxulub. There, ground-penetrating radar exposed a massive underground crater. Now we had this giant crater 110 miles across. We had the smoking gun, the timing lined up, everything that you would expect to find in that crater was there. And I think that, you know, for most, me included, really cinched the deal. 
the Alvarezes were vindicated. In 1994, telescopes across Earth recorded a haunting reenactment of the dinosaur apocalypse when the comet Shoemaker Levy 9 blasted into Jupiter. Nature had carried out an experiment we never could and confirmed the devastating power of extraterrestrial impacts. Investigators have gone from crime theory to smoking gun, and the body may soon follow. Currently, I'm working in a lair in southern New Jersey that's right at the end of the time of the dinosaurs. So it's really hard in geology to say that you have a day that occurred 65 million years ago. But in the last few years, we've started to pick up some proxies for meteor impact in the quarry. It's a really interesting idea to think that the one place in the world where you can put your finger on a fossil individual and say, hey, that turtle or that crocodile died in that pivotal calamitous day, that wipes out the dinosaurs and makes the modern world as we know it is in a pit behind a shopping mall in southern New Jersey. Tyrannosaurus rex is among the very last giant dinosaurs. There would have been individual Tyrannosaurus rex that may have seen the glow coming over the horizon from Mexico. The asteroid was six miles across, as big as Mount Everest. It zoomed 80,000 miles an hour, 50 times faster than a bullet. When it struck, the Earth shook with a billion times more force than the nuclear blast at Hiroshima. There was a tsunami wave that was probably a mile high. If you're a T-Rex living in Texas when that meteor hits, you might see that coming towards you. Further north in Montana, in Alberta, places like that, the heat is what is going to hit you. So for a couple hours that day, the temperature all across the planet heated up well past the temperature of the broiler in your oven, maybe twice that hot. So if you're living on the surface of the Earth that day, you're cooked. All of the stuff from the impact, both the asteroid and the rock around it, were molten, and a lot of that material was sent up, not just into the atmosphere, but into outer space, and then rained back down. Imagine sitting out there and you have showers, dense showers of molten glass beads coming down on you. There would be very little that would have survived that. It's really interesting when you look at who survives that impact and who doesn't. If you have a place to hide that day, it probably didn't take that much sediment. Maybe only six inches of sediment might have been enough to forestall the worst of that heat blast. But if you can't get underground, then you're doomed. From out of the ashes, a new creature arose to rule the planet. Dinosaurs and mammals evolved at about the same time. And for the whole 160 million year reign of the dinosaurs, our ancestors, the mammals, were basically trying to stay out of the way of the dinosaurs during all that time. So if that asteroid doesn't hit, why wouldn't we just still be these little mammals trying to stay out of the way of dinosaurs? That's probably what would have happened. So really bad day for the dinosaurs, fabulous day for mammals. The king was dead, and the meek had inherited the earth.